Hello, Sheila here with Creative Aging. Today we're going to paint a pink flamingo in watercolor paints. And I've already drawn it on my watercolor paper. And please feel free to cut your paper down if you want a smaller image. Or if you wanted to do this and make a card, you sure can make a card out of this um, painting. This is a full sheet of watercolor paper. Make sure you are painting on the right side. Um, it has just a little bit more texture, so flip over both sides and try to figure out exactly which one should be facing up. It will have a little bit more texture, and that will make a difference in how your paintbrush and paints are reacting. And you need, you know, just a variation of sizes of brushes. Um, I think definitely a few point brushes, and you can use a bigger one in certain areas. And when you're drawing, just think about, you know, how you want to start on the piece of paper. I like to go, you know, about a about an inch from the top to get to start the head and then uh, that should give you all of the room to get your whole flamingo on your sheet. And of course, you'll need um, a cup of water and a paper towel for blotting. And so we're going to use a lot of um, different colors. Definitely pinks, all the pinks, and purples, and we're just gonna kind of play with some colors and draw light, draw as many details as you can. As you can see, I got a little bit of the nose and the eyes and just a few of the feathers just to give me some things to work around and think about. And you don't need a whole bunch of water on this project, um, maybe a little less, just so you have more control. And so let's get started. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just use the, the main pink to start, and then I'll start adding lights and darks as we go. So I'm getting a little bit of paint, a little bit of water, and you can even do some oranges. I mean, you can, of course, always change what color you want to do this. And we don't really want our pencil lines to be the focal point of this project. So I'm going to go right along where I drew. And I drew very light. And so maybe practice, you know, drawing light because you just want this to give you a guide. Now, if you want to make your lines part of the painting and you want them to show through, you can draw darker or you can add pencil at the end. So like we've done um, in other projects, we've used our black fine point Sharpie. So you can make it your own. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this orange. So light orange and mix it in with the pink. And remember, you can always kind of play and then add more water to lighten it or blot some of it away if you're not liking the colors. But I think the pink and the orange might be nice. And whatever we want white, we're gonna leave it white. And so, the eye, I'm going around the eye and I'm gonna leave that white. Don't do the beak, because we're gonna add some black, so we're gonna leave the beak till the last, because it's gonna be black and white. And I'm gonna play with this brighter pink, see how that looks. Maybe add it right in here. And if you get a little bit that splatters on the outside, don't worry about it. Um, and if it does concern you, you can dot it away right when it happens. But these colors that we're using today are pretty easy to blot away. And 
I'm going to go back to my darker pink and start getting the body of it right here. We're going to use a lot of colors in the feathers. And if you want to use brush strokes kind of like feathers, you could do that. So see how I'm just moving and we're going to add a lot of colors so it doesn't matter. You don't need to, you can paint the whole thing if you want and then add colors on top of it or you can kind of do it in between now. I'm going to go back to the lighter pink, add that on top. And if you want the feathers to look like they're going down, you know, you move your brush to where they're going down. So you don't want it to all go the same direction or it won't look like feathers. So right now I'm just doing the light and the dark pink. And I think down here, I'm gonna add a little bit of this purple. So I don't wanna to be too dark to start, so I added more water. I can always get more paint on my brush. It's just harder to take it away. So think about starting lighter, you can build up. Maybe I'll go out this way, kind of give it a feather so it's not, so see my pencil lines, they were perfectly round and so I'm painting outside of my pencil lines. That painting was just to kind of give you a general guide, it's not detailed. So you can spend as long as you want on the, on the drawing, but you don't need all the details, you just want to kind of have a guide of where to start and the proportion. That's the most important thing. So I am being more careful right in here because these points, I want them to be pretty exact. And then I'll add some more pinks on top to make it a little more gradual. One nice thing is since we're using a lot of the same colors, it's not as important to clean the brush thoroughly because they're all blending together. I mean, I still rinse my brush when I switch colors just to keep my paint palette clean, but um, it's not as important as if we're switching to blue or something like that. So I'm gonna, I took my light pink, I'm just gonna go in and add few details along with the purple, not covering it up totally. So right there, see there's the curve, I'm going to draw that in. We've done a lot of practice with these point brushes, so you, you know you treat it almost like an, um, an ink pen where you're drawing with it. I'm gonna add a good point right there with the bright pink. Maybe in there too. And so see, I didn't, I'm, I'm not using a lot of water. There's enough water in my paint right here that I'm just, I want this to be bright and so I'm using less water on this project and I'm, I have enough water in here that I'm continuing to just use the paint to keep it pretty bright. With some of the other colors in the body you might want to use a little more water. You'll get a feel for it, you'll know what you need. And I'm going to go back into my 
head of the flamingo and I'm gonna use a little more pink to just tone down that orange. Let's look at it up close and you can see. I'm just gonna tone it down, just a little pink. So this is where you can kind of highlight, but it blends well with the orange and it actually looks kind of more like a natural flamingo with a coral, kind of a coral color. We don't have that exact color, so we're having to mix. And if you go into your beak, then that's okay because we're gonna cover it up with white and black. So if you go into it a little bit, that's all right. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use some more orange and I'm just gonna go into the neck a little. So let's go back, rinse our brush. Get this orange. Maybe alongside the, the edge of it. So that, that pink was a good base coat because you know with painting we always kind of do a base coat. Think about priming walls with your house. You need a good base coat and then that's gonna give it a lot more color in the end. And so at this point, let's figure out if we want more oranges in the body, which I think we do. I think that looks pretty. We haven't done a project using many of the oranges and the pinks, so this is kind of practicing new colors that we haven't done yet. And it's summery. I went to the zoo this week for, uh, they had like, kind of an adult walkthrough, and so I, I really loved the flamingos. That's what made me want to do this project. They were so cute. They had some baby ones. So if it starts getting too dark, this is where you could add water, or we can just kind of keep painting it till it lightens up on, a, on our own. I'm gonna get a little more water. I want these to blend. So now I'm just painting with water and making it blend where they're not harsh lines. Get a little more orange and I'll put it right up at the top. I'm gonna go all the way and I'm gonna give it a little point right here for a feather. Now this is where these points, this is where I might want to switch to a smaller brush. So I'm going to go a little bit smaller. Go ahead and get some water and I think I'm going to use this bright pink again with my small brush just to play with that, get a few more dark lines. And if that's too dark, you might wanna blot it away, which I think I'm going to. Now when you're blotting, see how I just set it on and I did not move it. If you move this paper towel, it's going to move the paint outside the lines where you don't want it. So I'm just blotting 
and I'm pulling it right away. And I'm going to use water on top of it too. Sometimes you need both. So as always, art is trial and error. I'd rather you play with things and try different techniques and not like it because that's how you're going to learn. So I do the same thing. I don't know how it's always going to look. I'm just playing with colors and I'm not trying to make this really realistic. I might go back to the purple with a small brush and come back down here, get some lines. So see, I'm just figuring out where the, there might be a line coming up and then maybe just a few lines for the feathers up here. And this is where I'm gonna paint with water again, just to tone down some of it. Kind of like when we did those sunsets, you don't want there to be stripes in the sky, just like you don't want too many harsh lines. So this just softens. pink so I'm adding pink right on that purple and then I'm blending it right in here into the orange And I might do some, some fine lines, like drawing. And I'm gonna go over them again, because there's already water on my brush, so I'm just gonna go over them a few times. So see how I, I drew that and then the, I blended the rest of it out. So there's still a line, but it's not too obvious. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my purple. I just want it to look like it has feathers. So I'm gonna use um, more water. I don't want much purple, so I'm just barely dotting it in the purple again. And I'm just gonna go in between to give it some shadows. This is a little more abstract than what we've done lately, so it's probably good. And I want it to be darker right and the underneath. Now that I made it that dark, I'm gonna take my pink again. So I switched, got some pink. I'm gonna go right alongside that purple
maybe more up here. And we don't want that, so we're going to, I'm gonna to switch to the bigger brush again, get a little more water, and I'm gonna paint with just water. And if you're afraid you got too much water, dot it on the paper towel just to test it. So I'm gonna soften that right there. So just on the edge. I wanted a darker pink at the bottom of the neck. Of course, this is just preference. I'm just figuring it out as I go. If you notice, this is one of the project I didn't have the example done beforehand. So I just figured I would play and not have an exact direction so we can kind of do it together. Usually I always do the examples before so I know exactly what to say. But I think it's good even for myself to experiment So get more more pink and I'm going in between. So I'm just I'm just adding more pink, more purple. I might go back in and add orange and then water. So see, I'm, this is just water and I'm just moving it to where there's just a little bit more marks in this so it's not so flat. I want this to dry for a minute. I'm gonna give it a break and I'm gonna work on the legs. And I think that I'm gonna switch again to the small brush and let's use more purples, I think. I'm gonna use this blue purple and then maybe the dark purple. So make sure you have a small brush for this, the legs. And I'm gonna turn this because it's, I'm painting crooked for the camera. So I need to turn the page. Since this is a little more intricate and I need a straight line, I have to have my hand a certain way. And you know, we can even take this purple, we could add it to this purple. So we'll do that and just see how it looks. And if that's too dark, then lighten it or you can make it dark and then use it lighter at the end. So I'm just painting with water and I'm just gonna drag this color to the bottom because I don't want it to be that dark the whole way down. But I like the color, I just don't want it to be that dark. So I'm just gonna paint over it with water and drag the color all the way down. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other. And if you wanna give it kind of like a little knee, then you can go outside the lines there. So a little more water and a little more of that purple paint. So it's good to start dark up here because then you can use the same paint for the whole time. So where the knee is, see how I'm going circles? And you could of course do these pink also, it doesn't matter, I just thought it be good to switch colors. And I think I want this back leg, I want it to be a little lighter. So I'm going to use my paper towel and I'm just setting it on top 
see I'm not moving it I'm just patting it very lightly and moving it away and it just lightened it a hair which looks better and if I want to use pink on that I could I'm gonna try it so let's do our little brush get a little bit of the light pink so I think this color let's see how this mixes with that purple so I just think a little bit of pink on the back leg might look good and then it will also blend right into this part of the body and I'm just I'm gonna do the same thing I'm not gonna use pink on the whole part of this leg but maybe a little bit just down here so you don't have to paint the whole thing you can just add little bits So that's how that looks. And let's try the little bit of that, this purple. I'm gonna switch back to my bigger brush, just slightly bigger. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this in the body, not much. Maybe down here in some of the feathers. So that's too dark, which I did that on purpose because I want to practice this again. So I'm using just water and I'm going to go over that like we've done. Now I'm just going right over the line I just did with water, but it just softens but it still keeps the color there. And I'm not blending it too much into the pink. I still want it to be purple. And this right here, I think we need to do that a darker pink. So we're gonna go over that again, cause now that looks awkward, cause it looks like everything else is underneath it. So we're gonna darken this up. I'm just gonna add more pink. More pink there. And so if you wanted to take these lines and just make them a little bit more in the body, you can. All right, there's a lot of water in there. I'm gonna let it dry. Let's do the beak. So it's good to give parts breaks. I'm gonna do a little pink in this little foot. Still have pink in my brush, figure out should use it there we go that looks good so let's do the beak um, we're gonna do it black and white and remember whatever you want to stay white just leave it as the paper the white on the you have a white in your set but it's more for blending um, it's not gonna make it a very good pure white it's just best to leave the paper white so with the black definitely use your small brush you need the black to be very controlled, so less water. And I think just to be safe, I would even blot before because the, if that black gets outside of your beak, you're not gonna be able to blot it away. You're gonna have to make it work for you. So I would just blot to make sure that you don't have too much water because it will get outside your lines. So we'll do the beak, I already drew it in. 
so it'd be a little easier. And you, of course, don't have to do it the darkest black. You can use more water if you want it more of a gray. And if you have shaky hands, um, it's almost good to just kind of dot. It might help you with control of the brush versus trying to hold it and paint. Um, some people have an easier time dotting. So that's, I, I'm even doing that right now because I had some coffee today. And I'm gonna use this point and right there, do a little dot in the eye. Don't need a big one. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit more dark, maybe up here. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over all the lines with paint. You don't have to do this, but you can. an extra dot okay that's how my beak looks and if that's too dark you can just take a little water and if you want to block some of it away let's just try it so I'm just gonna do a little bit and that may have been too much and I'm gonna blot it real quick Remember to use the clean part of your paper towel each time, especially with the black. So see, I used it, folded it, and I used a clean part. So I'm just blotting some of it away. I, I didn't want it to be so, I want there to be a little variation. So I'm going to do that again right here. Now the face, you can leave it. It's kind of light. It's got a lot of orange. Um, we definitely see how I got into that white space right there. I want to fix that. So I'm going to clean my brush. Make sure if you use that same brush as the black, make sure it's really clean. And I would test it before you. So once you rinse it, paper towel, totally clear. So it's good. I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to use my light pink again. And you don't want it to be too much color. And I want to cover this up, so I'm going to bring the face down. I'm going to go over this line again. And you could blot that away too if you wanted to just use water, but I just, it was so easy to go over it again that I decided to do this route. So I'm going to run around the eye, and I'm using the bright pink, and I'm using the water, and I'm going to bring this pink into the oranges and the other colors we mix so that it blends. So just let it gradually kind of turn into its own water color, like water eventually there's no more paint on your brush and it's just your painting with water so I'm doing that until it blends into the rest of the face okay now take a look at it think about if you want to add any more details any more lines if you want to bring in more purples and add more details in the feathers you can if you like it looking kind of soft, then you can definitely leave it. Um, check around the paper to see about little watermarks. So I think you can see those right there. I'm gonna use my clean brush again. 
just use water. I'm gonna go over these marks right here with just water. And that took them away, but I'm gonna blot it as well, just to make sure. Okay, and then do the same thing. This one right here, just water, takes it right away. These colors are so forgiving. I love projects like this where you can clean up the edges pretty nicely. Not all paint is that forgiving. And if you love your pencil mark, so you can go back in and take your pencil and go and add extra marks with the pencil lightly. And that can add to your image. If you just wanna play um, with watercolor and pencil, you know, after it's done, you can go back in and just add some, add some light marks and it makes, it gives it a totally different look, but it's nice and it's pretty. Just make sure it's deliberate and it's not like your pencil marks are showing through and you didn't mean to. So just make sure it looks like it's done on purpose and you could go in and just add a few little marks here and there to bring out your feathers more if you want. Make sure to sign it and if it's going to be a card, you can you know, write on the back or do a message on the front of it. Whatever you'd like to do with these. See you next time.